Hi everyone, Trina Phoenix here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and start my first video on my series of my awakening and my journey to the miraculous. And the reason I chose uh, the name The Journey to the Miraculous is because through this process I've discovered miracles and I've seen miracles happen in my presence and I've been, ab been able to actually witness uh, miracles of healing and miracles of transmutation and trans uh, transfiguration through many many different levels of my life so this is the reason that I'm calling this the journey to the miraculous because when you really dive it deep into yourself you really truly do find miracles because it's part of what you are as a creator so my journey uh, with spirituality started from my earliest memories um, one of my first memories that I have very deeply ingrained into my mind is when I was about three years old and um, at the age of three I was never exposed uh, to any form of religion thus far in my life um, my parents weren't very religious they believed in God and my mom was um, she believed in God a lot but she didn't really go to church but it, it didn't mean that she wasn't didn't have faith because she did and she she would tell me about God and about you know giving thanks and doing these certain things but when I was three I had an invisible friend and my invisible friend looked identical to the being known as Jesus so as I'm three years old and I have my invisible friend like many people do children especially um, I just thought this was normal so um, I would be with this being pretty much every every day. He was always within my consciousness. I always had access to him whenever I thought of him. And it was just a very natural process for me. So um, when I was three years old, I had memories of being alive before this physical avatar flesh body. I remembered heaven. I remembered um, being able to fly. I remembered um, the power of when we come together and we sing or rejoice, the magic in that. Um, these were certain things that I had memory of and I was born with this memory. I knew that before I came here that I was alive in another existence and that that existence was more real to me than this physical existence and at age three I think that is the magic of the child the magic of children is that potential within their mind to know what they truly are so at age three with no religious upbringing, never any exposure to Jesus. This was my invisible friend. So I was three years old and uh, some new neighbors moved in and I went straight to their house and wanted to introduce myself because I was just very friendly and I thought everybody was my friend. <laughs> so um, off I went and when I walked into their home, in the hallway they had a large portrait of Jesus and I walked down the hallway and I looked up at the picture and I was like that's my Lord and the, the the mom of the house she's like yeah that's our Lord Jesus and I'd never uh, heard the word Jesus before when I uh, would hear his name it was always the Lord so I always just called him the Lord because that was what I heard so um, 
as my invisible friend is the Lord and then I see his picture on a wall, I was like, wow, maybe he's here. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to go see the Lord. And she's like, you want to see the Lord? I'm like, yeah. She goes, well, you got to go to church. I was like, confused. But I thought, oh, well, I see him in my imagination. Maybe if I go to the church, I get to see him in real body, like this real body, because I knew I have a real body too, on top of the other body. I knew I was in a, a flesh body. So, um, and that was because before this time, I tried to jump off the roof and the Lord told me not to <laughs> and how bad it would hurt. But with my memories of being able to fly, I thought for sure I could fly. So he told me not to, and I did anyways, and I got hurt, but yeah, he prevented me from getting seriously hurt. That was the first time I actually had, uh, angelic, I think, a divine intervention that physically moved my body. So um, that was kind of interesting uh, that, that that had happened, but it was more confirmation that we do have access to the spirit powers in the physical. So these were things that I was battling with at age three. So I see this picture of Jesus. She tells me I gotta go to church. I'm like, I gotta go to church to see him? Okay, maybe that makes sense because he's in the physical the flesh. So I was super excited. I went home. I told my mom, I says, mom, I says, I got to go to church and go see Jesus. And she was like, okay, that's fine. She's like, who are you going with? I'm like the new neighbors. And I, you know, introduced her, you know, my moms to each other. And they were like, okay, we'll take you to church on Sunday. So I had to wait till Sunday, the whole thing. So Sunday comes around. I'm all excited. I'm going to go see Jesus, which is to me, the Lord. And, um, they bring me to this church and I was put into Sunday school so they put me into the Sunday school class and they're telling me that um, that if I want to know the Lord that I need to go into this dark closet and put a key on a shelf and they had a candle lit in there and that I was supposed to go in and ask him into my heart and to me that was kind of strange because I was like why would I put him in my heart when he's already like my best friend it, like part of my consciousness it was like we were kind of like like family like he was like the big brother that you never had um stern but thought you were super cute you know uh, this this wonderful energy of the being known as the lord to me um and never ever steered me wrong and never once gave me bad advice and still to this day I can say that's true. Um, but so I, I was starting to understand that that the adults didn't understand the Lord the way that I did. And that was a little disheartening for me. I, it was a little scary too. So I, I, I think, okay, well maybe these adults they know they know more than I do, so I'm gonna go into this dark closet and and see what's going on <laughs> so I go into the dark closet and I'm in this dark closet and there's a candle and there's a key in my hand and I was like put the key on the shelf so I put the key on the shelf and then I'm like looking around waiting for like like a door to open and you know the Lord would walk out and I'd get to hug him and say hi and you know get to get to just to hang out with him and uh it 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 just nothing was happening so inside my mind I was like Lord, this is weird. And I hear him in my head and he's he's giggling. And I'm like, well, this is not funny. Why are you laughing at me? And he starts laughing harder. And I'm like, okay, I'm in a dark closet with a candle and a key. And this feels really creepy to me because now I'm starting to get a little scared because I'm three and I'm realizing that I potentially am seeing things that other people aren't. So I, with my fear, like the Lord picked up on that and he was like, my child, fear not. And I was like, this is really weird. This feels creepy. I don't understand. And he says, he says, I know that you don't understand, but let me explain to you what I see. And I was like, okay, what, what, what is this? What is, what is this? He, he, and he was like, you 
already have that which they seek. You, my child, can see my face and you can hear my voice. He said, so that which you hold is that which they want to have. A direct personal relationship with me. And I was like, well, I don't understand. How come they don't? And he said, this is another thing I will explain to you. He said, it would be wise for you not to return to these types of places. And I was like, okay, but why? And he said, because that which you already possess is that which they wish to receive. And if you tell them that you can already speak to me and that you can already see me, they will tell you over and over again that you can't. And they will tell you over and over again that you need something else to have that connection with me. And through that, you will eventually believe them. And then, through that, you will not be able to hear my voice. And you will not be able to see my face. And I was like, what? Oh, that is not okay. And I literally stomped my feet in that closet and said with my heart and all of my soul that I would never allow that to happen and that I would never not be able to hear the voice of the Lord. And with that determination and will and all three within me must have agreed because I have always had a very strong connection to the being people call the Lord Jesus. I think this is the same person. I think it has many different names. I think it um, has, has a lot of, uh, it, it's now been turned into deception. And this was part of the message uh, that the Lord was trying to tell me when I was three years old. He was telling me that this internal knowing that you have inside of you that is connected to a very beautiful, powerful truth is being distorted. And it's being taught that it's not within you. It's outside of you. And in that moment, when I was three years old, I understood that. And at three years old, it broke my heart. So, part of who I am today started with that revelation at age three. And my proclamation from the deepest part of my heart to never ever give up on that presence and that guidance and that beautiful being that many know as the Lord or Jesus Christ. So, that is another one of my stories and one of my very earliest experiences that um, guided me to become a seeker and guided me to a deep understanding that what is within us is truly sacred and these natural abilities that we had as children that they would be robbed and stolen from us through the very things that we thought would bring us closer to it and that was terrifying and it was it's one of those when you when the tr you learn the truth about something it makes you sad and it breaks your heart 
and it, it did break my heart because um, at the age of three, it also led to the contemplation that I could see more than the adults that were supposed to be keeping me safe could see. So in one hand, it terrified me, but on the other hand, it made me just grab a hold of the Lord and the truth of our spirit and the truth of what we were born to be. And I held on to that as my anchor. And I think it really helped me navigate through this lifetime. And it helped me to stay anchored to my own spirit. So I hope this story helps some of you to understand uh, where, where a, a large part of my foundation comes from. And it is definitely with the Lord, also known as Jesus Christ. Um, another uh, part of this understanding that I received about the name Jesus was that um, this name, when it is used as a power that is outside of yourself rather than connected to you by your lineage of who you are as a child of the Creator, which He is a child of the Creator, the Son as well, the true Son. If, if you understand this, you won't fall into the Jesus trap because they took what He is and inverted it to deceive even God's holy elect. And I, later in life, realized that this would be one of the biggest deceptions done to humanity. So, understand from my belief and my opinion, it's only opinion and only my truth. It doesn't mean it's going to be resonating with you. Um, and that's okay. That is, that is so okay. But my truth uh, is that this being is real, but there's also the inverted one that you're being force-fed, and this is the one that tells you that this power is outside of you. So understand that this connection to this being is real, but it comes from within you. It will never come from outside of you. So know that you are very powerful and you are connected to these beautiful beings of light and love. And they truly are creators. And you truly are connected to them. So understand that we are connected to much more than we could possibly imagine. And with that, you have much more support than you could ever imagine. So believe in what is inside of you. And don't be uh, deceived by that which wants to feed off of you. So I hope this helps you all. I will uh, give you more of my journey as I am led to do so. But I wanted to share with you my beginning. And this was my beginning. And this is my foundation. And this foundation is strong. So I love you all. And I hope this helps many of you trying to find the truth between what's real and what's not. Namaste. Much love to you all. Mwah.